may be seated. Amen. Thank you, and you may be seated, and children, you may go to Children's Church. If you're visiting today, your children will be out that door right before you go down the steps to your right. Uh, and if you would, please, after the service, go get your children. Uh, we love them, but we don't want to keep them. And so, today we're going to be preaching about dry bones. And man, I want to tell you something. I, this passage can be looked at in so many ways. And, I'm, and, I'm, and I, like I said, it's been about nine years since I preached from this passage. And I think I shared a story once about a man in our church. And this was uh, in Alaska. Uh, that was right before we left. Matter of fact, one of my last couple sermons there. And one of the deacons, or former deacons, went home and he had called me that afternoon and he said, Pastor, I must have dry bones. And I said, well, Brother Jim, what's, what's that about? He said, well, I started to pick something off of a bookshelf and my arm broke and I must have dry bones. And so, unfortunately, and this was a man that drove our children, one of our children's van that over 130 people, children became saved in a 10-year period that he led to the Lord personally. And so, uh, what, a, what a great time. But within a month or two, Brother Jim was in heaven with the Lord. He had cancer that had ate up his whole body and didn't even know it. And so, um, that, that happened right after we left. And, and matter of fact, got told about it when we were on the road before we even got to Hawaii at that time. And so, uh, dry bones... Now, as we read this today and as we study this today, I want us to think about it. But what I want you to think about is spiritual dry bones today. Spiritual dry bones today. We're going to see what God can do in this passage. And I believe we all know that God can do anything and God can do all things. And if we trust God, he will if we have complete confidence and trust in him. So we're going to be in Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1 through 14. We're going to add one more verse on at the end. And so as we go to God's word today, in verse 1 it says, The Lord took hold of me, and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. I want to start by saying, I believe the Lord ought to take hold of us and carry us away many times in his spirit so that we might listen to him. I think if God got a hold of you and did what he did in this passage, it'd wake some of us up. It'd have to wake you up. In verse 2 he says, He led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. That seemed like an exciting little walk, didn't it? You know, I know some people love cemeteries and stuff like that. I, I don't love them. I, I don't, uh, you know, as a kid, we used to go hang out in the dark to see who was the sissies or not. You know, because I lived in the country. We didn't have anything else to do. So, you know, we, di we didn't have all the video games and everything everybody else has got now. We had to find fun of our own. But it's not a great place to hang out. But now when you're... Taken by the Lord and you're taken to a valley that's full of bones. And now God is taking you around through all of those bones. You know, if that had been me, I'd have been thinking, I don't know what God's up to, but this kind of scares me. Is he going to leave me here with these bones? See, one of the things, God's never going to leave you. God's never going to forsake you. God's always going to take care of you. But he is making a great point here. As he goes on in the second verse, and he says, they were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. Why do you think that he even mentioned that? Here's the thing, because I don't believe God does anything halfway. And if there had been any way anything else could have happened to make these bones come alive, it wouldn't have shown God to be who he is. But he notices not only are these bones all scattered out, not only are they all apart, but also they're dried out. Now spiritually, folks, I believe we got a bunch of dried out Christians in the church today. Spiritually dried out. Spiritually nothing going on. 
spiritually, they're here. But God hasn't been able to do a work in their life for a long time. We go on to verse 3. It says, then he asked me, son of man, can these bones become living people again? He made a great response here. Oh, so sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. I think one of the problems we have many times when God asks us something, his Holy Spirit speaks to our heart. We want to tell God how we want it to turn out. Many times we're the ones that want to tell God how he can do it. Matter of fact, Many times we would be there telling him. Matter of fact, I believe if I'd have been Ezekiel, when God pulled me over there, I'd have said, how did you do that? You know, I'm just one of those guys that I'd been saying, I know, Lord, that I was in your presence, but how did we get here? You see, I'd have been more concerned about how we got there than I was holding the hand of God going through there. And many times we get confused, I believe, by asking God how we got there instead of knowing that God is by our side to take us through whatever it is. And so now as we find this, he said, Only you know, O sovereign Lord, if these bones can come alive again. We go on in verse 4, and it said, Then he said to me, Speak a prophetic word, a message. To these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. Man, what a great thing here. But I, I'm afraid that this old human body and myself and my mind, I might have said, uh, Lord, that probably should belong to you. I mean, you're the one that can do it. And you're asking me to say the words. Let me tell you, a lot of times God's asking us to do something by the spirit of God. And we kept saying, well, God, use somebody else. Or God, just do it yourself. See, so he said, Lord, only you know if these bones can come alive. And then, then the Lord tells him, I want you to speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. And we go on. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I'm going to put breath into you and make you live again. Man, we need to be revived again. And the only way we can be revived is God puts breath into us that we might be revived again. Bunch of dried out Christians. Spent over 25 years in Alaska as part of the frozen chosen. Bunch of freeze dried Christians. Folks, I'm glad to be thawed out, but I have to say in the last couple of days it hadn't been a whole lot different. He goes on now in verse 6 and he says... I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. Now think about that. Think what God's doing here. Think about the miraculous signs that we have in God's word. He says, I'm even going to put skin on you. And then he says, I will put breath into you and you will come to life. And then you will know that I am the Lord. You see, first of all, we're not told in God's word, but how else would a bunch of bodies that have bones scattered all over a valley floor? I believe most of the time, if not all the time, it would have been because there was a battle that went on. And that battle that went on, the ones that were left on the valley floor are the ones that gave their life in that battle. And so, I mean, it may not have been that. We're not told what it is, but I, I would just offer to you that if you find a valley full of hundreds and hundreds and maybe even thousands of people, that bones were scattered all over a valley floor, Chances are there was a great battle that went on and those were the spoils or the after effect of that battle. You and I many times go through battles in our lives that there's a lot of things left on the valley floor, so to speak. 
There's many things in our life that happen that we say we trust God, but we're not able to let go and allow God to have his way. And as God is saying to these old dry bones, I will breathe breath in you and you will come alive. Verse 7 he says, So I spoke this message just as the Lord told me. Now I think that's something right there. You know, a lot of us believe we're saying what the Lord told us, but we like to add a little bit for effect. You know, I mean, we like to just put a couple other things in there because we know that person we're talking to is a little messed up. Maybe God left it out and we ought to add it in. And so here what we find in God's word, he says, so I spoke this message just as he told me. You say, well, God was standing right there. He better have. Let me tell you something, Christian. God's standing right there with you. You better. So as we go on, he says, suddenly, as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all across the valley, and the bones of each body came together and attached themselves as complete skeletons. Only God can put something that messed up back together where they can come together again in him. Complete skeletons. Every bone where it's supposed to be. And let me tell you, in a spiritual dry bone life, God is the only one that can put every piece where it needs to be. He goes on in verse 8. Then as I watched... Muscles and flesh formed over the bones. And then skin formed to cover their bodies. But they still had no breath in them. You see, they were complete as far as the body. But they weren't really alive yet. And I want to tell you, you and I are complete as far as the body. But sometimes we're not really alive until the Holy Spirit is able to breathe breath within us. In verse 9 he said, Then he said to me, Speak a prophetic message to the winds, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath, from the four winds, breathe into these dead bodies, so that they may live again. Verse 10 it says, So I spoke the message as he commanded me, and breath came into their bodies. They all came to life and stood up on their feet, a great army. There wasn't just a few people there. Great armies of that time were in the thousands of thousands, the tens of thousands. God put it all back together. Not only did he put them together, but he breathed the spirit within them and they came to life. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. And in verse 11, he says, Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are all saying, we have become old, dry bones. All hope is gone. Our nation is finished. Have any of you said any of that lately? We go on in verse 12 and it says, Therefore prophesy to them and say, This is what the sovereign Lord says, O my people. I will open your graves of exile. And cause you to rise again. Then I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And when this happens, oh my people, you, when this happens, oh my people, you will know that I am the Lord. And in verse 14 we find, I will put my spirit in you. And you will live again and return home to your own land. And then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken. And I have done 
what I said. Yes, the Lord has spoken. Amen. Now, when we read these verses and look at this passage, you say, well, Pastor, that was applied to Israel. Let me tell you, we're God's people. Israel is God's people. This message applies to us today just like it did then. You say, but we're not a valley of dry bones. Oh, don't fool yourself, O oh church. Sometimes we are a valley of dry bones because God has not been able to do what he wants to do because we won't allow him to. And these dry bones can only come alive whenever the breath of God comes into us and the Spirit of God shows us what He wants from us and we let go of all the other junk and allow God to do the work in and through us. You see, it's time, old church, we wake up. We all talk about America's doomed, America's doomed. The reason America's doomed is because the church today won't allow the Spirit of God to fill us. We need to allow the Spirit to fill us that we might become more like Him. Boy, you can know all the Bible anybody can know, but unless you understand that you have to let the Spirit work in your life, you don't know a thing. We need to understand. Sitting in the pew doesn't show the lost world that we know Jesus. Okay, pastor, you mean we just don't, shouldn't come to church anymore? No, I didn't say that. We need to sit in the pew, but we need to get out of the pew and tell people about Jesus. Amen. We need to tell people what's going on and what God is doing. And the Spirit of God needs to breathe a new life within us because we're dead today. The reason people don't flock to churches because I believe they see a bunch of dead Christians, so to speak, and they don't care enough about other people to tell them about Jesus that they might be saved. God answers prayers. God wants us to be filled with Him. And you say, well, Pastor, I don't think that I'm a dry bone spiritually Christian. Let me get, just give you a couple ways you can know if you are. You may be, this isn't Jeff Foxworthy, by the way. You may be a spiritually dried Christian if you can't get over something in your life. You may be a spiritually dried Christian if you can't forgive somebody in your life. You may be a spiritually dried Christian if you just don't seem to care enough about other people to love them the way God loves them. You may be a freeze-dried Christian if when you look at other people, you don't see a child of God. You may be a freeze-dried Christian when you come to church you're just looking at other people instead of yearning for the presence of Almighty God. You may be a freeze-dried Christian if whenever somebody needs help, you say, I'll pray for you. You may be a freeze-dried Christian if you're not willing to go the extra mile. You may be a freeze-dried Christian as all you can think about is everything but God. You may be a freeze-dried Christian if your prayer life is almost nothing. You may be a freeze-dried Christian if the time you spend in God's Word is very little. You may be a freeze-dried Christian if you don't come to God's house and expect God to do a work within you. And you are a freeze-dried Christian if you come to God's house expecting to work in everybody else but you. I'm just saying, I believe God is so sick of churches today because we don't look like him. And we definitely don't act like him. We want it the way we want it. 
We want it to be the way we think we ought to have it. We don't want it to change. Oh, church today, has God been able to breathe new life into us as a church? I want to use Brother Oliver's favorite verse here today. All right. Second Chronicles 7, 14. Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. It doesn't stop there. It starts there. They'll humble themselves and pray. Then, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. It doesn't say set their wicked ways to the side. It doesn't say to put them down but leave that strap on there so you can pick them up again. It doesn't say that you just come down and pray about them once. It says that you turn from those wicked ways. Stop it is what it means. Give it to God and give him the glory. Then he says, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will restore their land. You see, that's God's word. That's God's promise. And I believe, Stifton Baptist Church, if you and I will understand that that's exactly what has to happen to us as a church and by the way, everyone that here is part of the church, you and I need to get on our knees before God and seek His face that we might become more like Him. And as we seek His face to be more like Him, you and I need to turn from everything that is not of Him. From all our wicked ways. Then, and only then, God will hear from heaven, will forgive our sins, and restore our land. To become the church that God created us to become, we got to be more like Jesus. To be more like Jesus, we need to allow him to breathe that spiritual breath of life from his Holy Spirit into us that we can live more like him. What about it, old church? Are we ready? Oh, I want to tell you. I yearn for the day to see God's glory every time we walk in and to a worship service. My wife can tell you we've been yearning for that for years. We've seen it a handful of time in churches. But I yearn for it. I want to see God's face. I want to quit looking at everybody else and complaining. And just see God move in people's hearts and lives. And instead of saying when we see it in somebody else's life, instead of saying, God, why not me? We need to say, Lord, I know why not me. I'm not right with you. And I need to be right with you that I might see your glory. Don't you think it's about time we give that over to God today? Don't you think it's about time we finally say enough is enough? Oh, Father. I'm afraid my spiritual bones are dry. And I know you're the only one that can make them come back to life. Father, we just want to give you the praise. And Father, that long list that was mentioned today, some of that applies to me. And I want to just give that over to you today. We're going to have a time of invitation in just a moment. And the praise team is going to come. 
And as they sing, I'm just going to ask you to step out and step forward. Maybe just need to rededicate that life. Maybe to realize, God, I am, I'm not yearning for you. I just come to your house. God, I'm not obedient to you and what you're telling me. I'm not obedient in all kinds of things in my life. You might just be saying, I can't let go of some things. God, I have to have you to help me. Maybe today you don't know my Jesus. I want to tell you he died on the cross of Mount Calvary that you might be saved. And if you'll ask him into your heart, he'll forgive you your sins and he'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You see, that choice is yours today. If you don't know him, would you come and receive him? If you know him today, are you living for him? Oh, you say, Pastor, don't say that. Now I can't come forward. People think I'm not living for him. Come on, folks. We've all got stuff wrong in our lives that need to be made right with him. And we ought to be giving God the glory and God the praise when we finally give it over and see somebody else doing it for him. Let's quit looking at everybody else and start looking to Jesus. Let's start understanding the one that can make us whole again. Only his spirit. I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask you to stand. And then I'm going to ask you to come. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your word today. And Father, even though we see this in your word about dry bones that were actually bodies that came to life, Father, I pray spiritually our dry bones will come to life in you. Father, I pray our church will become who we should be in you. Father, I pray that our lives will be with your word 100%. And Father, that nothing in our hearts and lives will be contrary to you and what your word says. Oh, Father, just help us love you enough to trust you enough to take care of the things in our life that we won't give over to you and we can't let go of. Father, help us to do that today. Father, we, we just want to give this time over to you and give you all the praise and all the glory. Father, someone that doesn't know you, that they'd come to know you today. Somebody needs to make this church their church home. Father, I just pray that you would do a work within us. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our midst. We just need and want to see more of you. Father, take this time and use it in a mighty way. In these things we ask, in Jesus' precious and holy name, amen.